Tough Torque, the most preferred brand of drive systems in the world for outdoor power equipment, as well as off-highway vehicles, light industrial equipment, agricultural and construction machinery, snow removal equipment, and applications for the marine industry. Even from the beginning of the Tough Torque brand, three values drive every product we manufacture. Quality, innovative engineering, and value. We want service technicians and servicing distributors to clearly understand the IHT and how it operates, to know how it works to produce the best driving experiences, and to understand the functionality of the components that make up the hydrostatic transmission. There are six areas that will be emphasized during this training. Pump cylinder block assembly, motor cylinder block assembly, variable swash plate, fixed swash plate, center case assembly, and gear train assembly. Always remember, Tough Torque Service Department can supply you with aftermarket parts, repair kits, and service information. Understanding the integrated hydrostatic transmission, the technology platform behind Tough Torque's drive system. For the purpose of this training, we are using the K46. Tough Torque has wide and deep product offerings. However, the K46 is our most popular drive system. This is the K46. First, locate the unit identification, QR code, and patent labels. It is easier to see the internal design when the transaxle is inverted and the lower case is removed. There are two distinct sections the gear chamber, the hydrostatic chamber. Let's begin by identifying the components as we break down the transaxle. This is the center case assembly, containing circuits that allow oil to flow between pump and motor. The oil filter is easy to recognize. It is necessary to keep oil clean of foreign matter. Magnets, used to attract ferrous fragments that may occur from wear and tear over time. Gears, brake disc, and brake shoes. This is the cylinder block assembly. It is made up of a mating surface and group of pistons arranged in a circle. These pistons are sealed on one end and hollow on the inside. A spring within each piston strives to keep the piston extended a certain distance outside the cylinder block. The entire cylinder block assembly is connected to the drive shaft from the engine on the vehicle. That connection may be a direct connection of the shaft or may be some type of belt and pulley system to transfer the power. Regardless of how it's connected, the important thing to understand is that the cylinder block assembly is turning along with the engine drive shaft. We've said the pistons are hollow. In a working transmission, the pistons are filled with oil. The entire cylinder block assembly is held tightly against a component called the center case. Let's take a look at the pump cylinder block assembly. As long as none of the pistons are compressed, there will not be any oil flow in the cylinder block. The assembly rotates, but nothing really happens. Now, let's change that. If a piston is pushed in, the oil flows out of the piston. When the pressure is released, the spring pushes the piston back out again, and the oil is drawn back into the piston. Now, we will bring another component into the design. This is similar to a metal plate with a hole cut out of the center. A cutaway is performed on the plate for better visibility. Look what happens when we apply pressure to just one side of the plate. The pistons, which we highlighted in red, are being compressed. The oil of the piston is being forced into the main circuit of the center case. As the cylinder block assembly rotates, however, each piston that had been compressed is allowed to spring back out. We have now colored these pistons blue. Each piston is alternately compressed and released with each rotation of the cylinder block assembly. This happens because the plate, which we call a variable swash plate, is only applying pressure to one side. When the pistons come back out, they again draw oil inside. The oil enters through the other port on the mating surfaces of the center case. The pump and motor are connected together resulting in a closed circuit. As long as the engine turns the pump shaft and the swash plate is set at an angle, oil flow will result. Now, 
Suppose we move the swash plate back so it's not pushing on any of the pistons. Since none of the pistons are being compressed, there is no more pressure on the oil. But what if we move the swash plate just a little? Now we are creating just a small amount of pressure through the pistons to the oil. We are also getting a small amount of flow. We can control the flow from zero up to 100%. It is a fully variable system. Now see what happens when we apply pressure to the opposite side of the swash plate. The pistons that had earlier been released are now compressed and vice versa. The effect of this is that the flow of oil is also reversed. The pump cylinder block assembly takes the energy from the turning shaft of the engine and transfers that energy to the flow of oil through a passage in the center case. By changing the angle of the swash plate, we can transfer as much or as little energy as we like. We also have complete control over the direction the oil is flowing. We generally refer to the entire cylinder block and swash plate unit as the variable displacement pump. The only step remaining is to convert the oil flowing back into mechanical energy that can turn an output shaft. If we connect the output shaft to the wheels of a vehicle, then we have complete control over the speed and the direction just by moving the swash plate. To complete this hydraulic system, we will add a motor cylinder block assembly on the opposite end of the center case. The motor and pump cylinder block assemblies are the same in design but may not be the same size. High pressure oil from the pump flows through a circuit or passage within the center case to the motor cylinder block. Pressurized oil pushes against the pistons. The pistons extend against the angled fixed swash plate equipped with thrust bearing. Again, we will do a cutaway on the plate to improve visibility. As the pistons extend, they force the motor cylinder block to rotate, thus converting oil flow from the pump back into mechanical energy that is transmitted to the reduction gears, the differential, and finally to the wheels. As oil loses its pressure, it returns to the pump through the main circuit in the center case, completing its cycle back to the pump. The output of the pump will determine the speed of the motor. As the oil flows from the pump, the speed of the motor output shaft increases. When the oil flow from the pump reverses, so does the rotational direction of the motor's output shaft. You are controlling everything with just the simple movement of the variable swash plate of the pump. This is the basic system as it is utilized in many tough torque drive systems. The bypass, a secondary system, will be encountered when breaking down the hydrostatic pump and the motor assemblies. The function of the bypass is to dislodge the motor cylinder block from the mating surface of the center case, causing massive oil leakage that flows back into the transmission case. During normal operation, a certain amount of oil leaks out of the system. These leaks are intentional. The oil seepage provides critical lubrication around the pistons and between the cylinder blocks and the mating surfaces on the center case. This lost oil, which accumulates in the transaxle case, has to be made up in the primary hydraulic loop or the pump will cease to function properly. From here, the oil is drawn through the filter into the center case by negative pressure. Two check valves control the flow of this makeup oil system. These valves alternately open or close depending on whether the transmission is operating in forward or reverse direction. Worn parts can cause excessive oil leakage and loss of power. There are two specific parts that we will use as examples when you troubleshoot for problems. Cylinder block assembly. Center case. For your convenience, you can order parts online by going to our website, toughtorque.com, and click on the parts and services tab on the left and follow the prompts. For any other questions or concerns, you can call the Tough Torque Customer Service Department toll-free at 866-572-3441. Tough Torque, driving your best ideas.